Hey everybody, welcome back to Ravenstead. It's time for another build. Got to do something a little different this go around. We're going to make a monstrous tree for the gaming table. So this is going to be a really big tree, lots of gnarled branches. Uh, we're going to try and work out some kind of a gnashing maw on the side of the tree. Uh, that'll give our players a good challenge. So why don't you watch over my shoulder and let's get something made. All right, let's get into this build. I'm going to mount the trunk of the tree. I just took an eighth inch bit there and drilled a hole up pretty far in there. And then I'm just using a two and a half inch deck screw. Drive that in, mount it to that foam block. And then we'll do a little carving. I use a craft knife here. I don't cut myself, so don't worry about that. I'm just going to carve this block down so uh, it kind of looks like this tree is growing up out of a, a boulder or something like that. I like a lot of different levels some undercuts anything that doesn't look like a big block of foam so once I get the shape that I want I'll do a little texturing I've got a brass brush that I use on the edges here that gives it a nice kind of cut striated look and then go over it with a little bit of aluminum foil that gives it a pebbly rocky kind of texture now for our uh, monstrous tree here tree blight we're gonna need some branches I'll drill a few holes. Now I'm just hot gluing all this stuff together. Squirt a little hot glue in there and in goes a branch. This is all from the same plant. It's a mountain laurel. It's a very slow growing plant. Uh, on the lower half usually there's some dead branches. So that's what I harvested here. This isn't any five wood or anything. And I split up a bunch of little pieces from a larger section. And, uh, you know, I was thinking that I would use these to build the mouth of the, the monster tree here. I thought he needed a crown because, you know, that top where I cut it off was just kind of blocky. So made him a little crown of planks. And now I'm just trying to figure out how to make the mouth on this thing. Uh, I can kind of envision it like reaching down uh, with his branches and pulling whatever he wants to eat up to his mouth just a big gaping hole and uh, it kind of comes together I was gonna do some roots coming out of the ground but I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more uh, spiky a little bit more challenging for somebody to get close to the base of the trunk so I put in those spikes We'll go ahead and black bomb this thing. Instead of using the wood's natural um, color, I decided to go ahead and, and paint it out and do washes over it. It kind of needed the extra support of having that Mod Podge and black paint mixture kind of pushed into all the crevices. I also worked to hide some of the blobs of glue. Like I got a little crazy with the hot glue on this one. But it's a pretty sturdy little model. Do some dry brushing here. This is uh, a, like a medium brown latex paint. I've got the brush pretty dry because I want to keep most of those black shadows in there. And then a really light brown over top. That's kind of cool. Now you can kind of see the eyes there and the face. I love the texture on the back. That piece of wood is really pretty. I built him some arms and that's all the wood dry brushed with the browns and then I'll go over the base kind of create that stone texture with a light gray and then highlight it even more with a parchment it's like a really uh, light tan I'm a little sloppy with my painting but you know what little mistakes like that they all tend to work out later on. It's no big deal. Like, yep, yeah, a little sloppy. And just rub it off, work it in, whatever. Cover it with lichen. There's plenty of ways to, you know, hide our mistakes. It's really starting to kind of come together now. So that's the same really uh, light color, the parchment that I used on the stone. So that just kind of ties all those colors in. Now we're going to go over it with some washes. 
This one is a uh, burnt umber acrylic ink mixed with water, about 50-50. I'm just putting that on everything. So top to bottom, it's getting a layer of the brown wash, even on the wood. That kind of helps to dull things down on the wood and tie it into the stone uh, tonally. And some green wash. And that's just a bright green acrylic paint mixed with a little bit of water. I put that over the trunk as well. I do all of the washes wet on wet. So each layer, I don't let it dry. I just keep on going. Sometimes it get a little bit muddy, but it kind of works out once it dries. This is some Vallejo rust wash straight out of the bottle. Um, just giving it a little bit of pop of color. Kind of looks like a bloodbath at the moment, but it dulls down it kind of makes sense later on and I uh, had to do something to kind of give this guy uh, a monstrous appear appearance so I used some neon purple latex paint and then uh, makeup brush there I'm doing his eye makeup got to get him ready to go to the club so I'm being really super light here like uh, just barely even touching the wood with the brush and that gives it kind of a glowing effect I'm gonna paint on some PVA glue here there everywhere and then I'm gonna sprinkle on some fine flocking and that'll give us our mossy kind of forested texture I did realize that the uh, the paint that I put in the eye sockets was still wet so I was having to be pretty careful sprinkling the flocking in there. I didn't want him to have mossy eyes, although that might have looked cool. Like I say, if you make a mistake, you know, just just drive on. Don't give up. Just keep going. This thing didn't turn out anything like I had envisioned at first. It turned out, fortunately, in my opinion, a little better than what I had in my mind. I know you guys like the rotten plank. This guy's pretty much a rotten plank. All of them. just tap off the excess try not to get I try not to get too carried away with this stuff um, I don't want him to look like a big piece of asparagus so leave some of that wood texture showing and he's got a little clump of foliage there on the end of one of his uh, tree arms looks like he's ready to schwack somebody with that thing Putting in a little lichen here. The, the texture of the coarser lichen, I think it looks kind of like Spanish moss, hanging moss. That's pretty cool. There's a little bit more poking out of his crown. I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I had that piece of wood that kind of had a bend in it, and I envisioned him having to kind of lean back to be able to get his mouth onto something. I mean, he's a tree, so a little stiff. A few more bushes here for our critters to hide in, and uh, I'll give you guys a look. Let me spin it for you. The tree blight. He's coming for you. I've got a Kickstarter coming up. I'll put a link in the description down below. Uh, it's Fenrir's Fangs. It's a game of chance that I make. And it's going to launch on June 24th, Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you guys will be able to check it out. I'll have a link to the video here at the end. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about this build. This is a little departure from what we normally do. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Appreciate it.